know that feeling. You open Elementor, and all you want is a simple heading. But this is what you get in version 3. Three nested divs for one element. And this is version 4. One wrapper, one job, clean. Let's take a closer look. Part 1. The workflow. Let's start with the biggest change in how we work. It's going to change everything. This is going to be the biggest change inside Elementor since Elementor started. They are literally going to change the whole editor experience. In the old editor, styling was all over the place. Sometimes we would find layout settings under style, other times in advanced. Then we had to guess where things like spacing or alignment were hiding. It worked, kinda. But it was messy, and I often found myself just clicking around until I found the right place on where to edit a specific feature. Now, in the new editor, there's one clean system. Everything starts with atomic elements, and the styling happens inside a new style tab. That's where we define layout, spacing, typography, colors. It's finally all in one place. And even better, we can create reusable CSS classes and apply them across our site, which means less clicking, less copying, less guessing. This time, it's a real workflow, not just a workaround. Part 2. Global Styles So here's the thing about global styling. Elementor is taking things to the next level, and honestly, I'm here for it. Because I don't know about you, but ever since I started using Elementor, I kind of stopped thinking in CSS. I was never really a code person anyway. I mean, sure, I remember trying to hand code websites with HTML and CSS way back then, but I was hooked the second no-code builders came around. And now with editor version 4, I feel like we're getting back that structured, logical way of thinking without having to actually write code. It's like, yes, we're using real CSS, yes, we're creating classes and variables, but we don't need to worry about how to link all that stuff to our actual content. The class manager helps you control the hierarchy and organize your classes. Reorder classes by simply dragging and dropping them, rename classes, and delete classes. Elementor does that for us, and honestly, that's awesome. It's the OG way of styling a site but wrapped in a UI that makes sense. I really like this direction. That means we are getting classes, variables, and reusable design tokens. We can create a class like button primary, style it once, and apply it anywhere. And if we later want to change the look, we update the class once, and it's changed across the entire site. We don't have to go back to every component and paste a design style. This isn't just efficient. It's a full design system, built into Elementor. And for many of us who came to Elementor because we didn't want to code, this is the best of both worlds, the logic of CSS, with the comfort of drag and drop. Part 3. Performance and Page Speed This one's big. Previously, every single widget came with its own CSS output. Currently, uh, in the editor, we are working more of an uh, element level, meaning that each element with the styling creates its own CSS output. Now with version 4, Elementor outputs one style sheet for all global styles. But uh, shifting to a global system, to a CSS-based system, now we're thinking globally, meaning less uh, CSS per element, but more global. But it's not just the CSS that's been optimized. In Elementor version 3, here's what the code looks like when you add just one container in one heading. Seems simple, but the output is surprisingly deep. You get three nested elements an outer container div, an inner layout wrapper, and finally the heading. All of that, just for a single widget. Now, let's look at the same thing in version 4. One flexbox, one heading. And this time, just one wrapper div. That's it. No extra nesting, no inner wrappers, just clean modern HTML. Speaking of no extra bloats, Editor v4 Alpha introduces lighter DOM and less divs. Each element uses a single div wrapper compared to multiple nested divs in previous versions, ensuring your site runs and loads as fast as possible. This kind of cleanup might seem small, but across an entire page, it adds up. A lot. And let's be honest. We've been asking for this. For years. Elementor was always powerful, but it had a reputation. Too many wrappers, too much bloat, hard to debug, heavy DOM, poor SEO structure. And now, that era is over cleaner output, leaner code, a layout engine that actually respects what you build. For me, this change alone makes v4 worth switching to, because when your site starts with better code, everything else just works better. I'll show you more on that in my next video. 
because have you ever tried applying an awesome web design trend like pneumorphism on an Elementor website? Yeah, right. Nobody wanted it because the page speed sucked then and it was hard to fix that. Part 4. The new UI. Let's talk about the new UI. At first, it still feels like Elementor. The sidebar, the drag and drop, the canvas on the right side, it's all still there. But if we look a little closer, things have definitely changed. We've now got atomic elements. These are more focused widgets, smaller in a good way. Each one has one job, and that makes them easier to understand and quicker to style. Now let's talk styling. In previous versions, each widget had its own style tab. Slightly different options, different structure, different logic. In V4, that's gone. We now have a unified style tab. Same structure, same logic, no matter what you're editing. Headings, images, buttons, they all use the same styling UI. That means faster learning, less confusion, and a smoother workflow. Bottom line, the interface in V4 isn't just cleaner, it's smarter, faster, and more predictable. And that makes all the difference. Part five, mobile first design, finally. Now every single style property can be customized per screen. Okay, this is the one I'm most excited about because honestly, how long have we been pretending our sites are responsive when in reality we just shrink stuff down? Well, now we can actually build mobile first. And I don't mean just tweak the font size a bit. I mean really starting in mobile view. Designing from the ground up, layout, spacing, alignment, all of it. Because with this new class-based system, we're not just styling individual widgets, we're defining how things behave at every breakpoint. We can give a component a mobile layout first, then scale it up for tablet and desktop, which makes so much more sense. Especially if your users are like mine, and 80% of them come from phones anyway. So yeah, real responsive design. Not just desktop first and hope it looks okay on mobile. This changes everything. Part six, what's next? Let's be honest, this is a big update. Probably the biggest since Elementor switched from sections to containers. And if you remember that change, yeah, it was a bit confusing. Not really broken, but not smooth either. A lot of people didn't really know how to use it at first. And honestly, the rollout felt rushed. But this time, Elementor seems to have learned. Editor v4 doesn't feel like just a UI refresh. It feels like they're rebuilding the system from the ground up. At least I hope so. We don't know exactly when it'll become the default editor, but the alpha version is already available. And if you're curious, you can try it today just not on a live website, yet. And I'm doing the same. In the next video, I'm going to design my first website using Editor V4, and I'll do it in Numorphism style, because I love modern design trends. And honestly, that style just wasn't realistic with classic Elementor. Also, I'm gonna address the haters. So if you want to roast them with me, subscribe now. And if you want to try V4 right now, watch this video here where I'll show you exactly how to install the new editor step by step.